suerte ng isang armado ng lalaki ang resort world Manila. Sa terror attack, hindi ito ay isang kriminal na isip. Just uh, a few minutes ago, the Philippine National Police Chief said gunfire at a large casino complex in Manila was part of a... At about 10 p.m. on the night of June 1, 2017, a gray BMW car was seen moving at a fast pace along the dark streets of Paco, Manila, Philippines. Inside the car, three prominent individuals were having a heated conversation that might have involved a lot of money. Seated on the driver's seat is Elmer Mitra Jr., a lawyer and an employee at the Philippine National Construction Corporation. At the passenger seat is Alvin Cruzin, former Manila police and a casino financer. And at the back seat is 42-year-old Jesse Javier Carlos, a former employee at the Department of Finance. The discussion was in between Mitra and Cruzin against Carlos. Jesse Carlos was known to be a compulsive gambler and was dismissed from the Department of Finance after failing to fully disclose his statement of assets, liabilities, and net worth, which is a requirement for people who work in the government to avoid corruption. Moments later, the discussion turned into an argument. At the back seat, Jesse Carlos carefully takes out a 9mm pistol and cautiously pointed it behind Mitra's head. Unaware, Elmer Mitra Jr. continues to drive. As the car turned to Paris Street, Carlos shot Mitra. After a few moments of silence, witnesses around the area heard multiple gunshots coming from the inside of the car. A witness then saw one man crawling out from the back seat and limps toward a Pasible street and was not seen at the area again. At about 12.05 a.m., midnight of June 2, 2017, a taxi arrived at the taxi and loading area of the Resorts World Manila. The driver noticed that the man was limping as he entered the building. The man was Jesse Javier Carlos. Carlos entered the building and immediately waited for an elevator to go to the casino area. As Carlos entered the elevator, the two women inside immediately noticed something suspicious. Carlos was wearing an all-black outfit and was carrying a large bag. Inside the bag is an M4A3 rifle and a container full of gasoline. As Carlos left the elevator, he then wore a mask and proceeded to the casino. Meanwhile, inside the casino, a female security guard by the name of Grace was on duty at the entrance. She was, however, alone and unarmed. As Carlos entered, instead of going through the metal detector, he immediately avoided it and the only guard was overpowered and failed to stop him. Without saying a word, Carlos then took out his M4A3 rifle and opened fire. Instantly, panic sets in. The civilians rushed to the exits and ran for their lives. The 
female security guard then radioed for help, alerting every casino personnel of the situation. Immediately, an emergency protocol was initiated, which led to an evacuation of more than 12,000 guests and employees. At certain areas of the building, the evacuation was handled properly by the staff. However, it was a different story at the other areas of the casino. Due to panic and fear, screams echoed throughout the building, with some people shouting the words ISIS and terrorists, which caused more panic and misinformation. With the people frantically running for their lives, the exits were then immediately crowded, leaving some people to rush to the comfort rooms and other secluded areas for cover. As the gunman continues to fire his weapon, the people then thought that there were multiple shooters. At the crowded exits, it was chaos. People were pushing, shoving each other, causing a stampede. Some people fell to the ground and was injured. Back at the casino, Carlos proceeded into the main playing areas and fired at the ceiling and TV monitors. As Carlos arrived at the gambling tables, he then takes out the container full of gasoline from his bag, poured it into the tables and set it on fire. Moments after, the footage showed that Carlos threw his bag containing bullets into the fire, causing it to continuously explode like gunshots. tricking everyone around that there are more than one person behind the attack. This led to some guests and employees to continue hiding in some rooms despite the smoke getting thicker. The gunman then proceeded to the slot machine area and burned the carpets, chairs, and even the slot machines. At about 12.18 a.m., the gunman forced his entry into the casino safe room, shooting every lock of the doors. This became the main speculation for his motive, a robbery. Aside from being dismissed from the Department of Finance in 2012, Jesse Javier Carlos was also in a huge debt and was known to have been banned from a number of casinos two months before the attack. As Carlos broke into the safe, he was taken aback to see that there is no money inside but only gambling chips that is worth millions of pesos. Left with no choice, Carlos then took 113.1 million pesos or about $2.3 million worth of casino chips. Outside the building, the police arrived after receiving a series of calls, reporting that there are multiple shooters inside the casino and that a fire is spreading fast. The police then coordinated with the security team of the resort's World Manila and entered the building. But there is one problem that the police and the security team are facing. They were not sure where and how many perpetrators there are. Therefore, they needed information from the personnel assigned in the CCTV room to supervise their assault. However, the CCTV room inside the casino were abandoned, making the police unable to pinpoint the exact location of the attacker. Due to this, they must first reach the CCTV room and gain information. After stealing the casino chips from the safe, Jesse Carlos has a new objective. He must now find a way to get out of the building. However, the CCTV footage shows that Carlos was unsure where to go and what to do next.
as Carlos was trying to find his way out in the stairs. The police and the security team arrived, following their scan through the CCTV footage. Even so, they did not have the exact location of the gunman. Moments later, a security personnel scanning through the area heard faint footsteps coming from a room and saw the gunman. Realizing he's been hit, Carlos retreated and went upstairs into the Maxime's Hotel, a hotel that is a part of the resort's World Manila. A few minutes later, Carlos reached the room areas and forced his entry into room 510 of the hotel. Carlos then can be seen igniting blankets and sheets of linen to make it harder for the police to gain access of the area. At about 1.45 a.m., after successfully tracking the location of the suspect, the police reach room 510 and prepares to storm it. Not knowing what to expect, the police cautiously barge into the room and saw a horrific scene. Lying in the bed is a completely burnt body of Jesse Javier Carlos. It was reported that after entering the room, Carlos poured gasoline onto his body and set himself on fire. Carlos then took his gun and shot himself in the head. However, it was just the beginning of the tragedy. The fire that Carlos caused had just intensified and the smoke became thicker. Inside the comfort rooms and other secluded areas, frightened people are cramped up at spaces they thought were safe. Trapped, they inhale the smoke, slowly suffocating them. They try to stay alive as their loved ones are waiting outside. But the smoke is too much. As they take their last breath, they remember their loved ones one last time. With the perpetrator dead, the police and rescuers rushed inside. But it was too late. 37 innocent people lost their lives. It was reported that nobody was killed by the gunfire, but they all died due to suffocation. Investigations done after the incident confirmed that there was a lapse in the security of the casino, revealing that some security personnel were not in their assigned areas when the gunman arrived. Moreover, the officials were questioned on why they were not able to monitor Carlos in the CCTV footage, and also why there was only one guard which was unarmed in the entrance of the casino. In addition to the investigation, there were claims of the attack from terrorist groups, as it was the same time where there was a war going on in Marawi City, which led by terror groups that pledged allegiance to ISIS. But the claims were repeatedly rejected by intelligence officials and investigators, insisting the suspicion that it was done by one man and the only motive was robbery. Up to this day, the exact motive of Jesse Javier Carlos remains unclear. 
Moreover, what the reason was and what had transpired inside the car that led to the death of Elmer Mitra Jr. and Alvin Cruzen remains a mystery. But what is clear is that the attack in the resort's world Manila was a selfish act that ended the life of 37 people and crushed the dreams of many families and loved ones. Although the whole incident was all caused by one person, the factors that led to the whole tragedy were a responsibility of many. Nadala sa puso ko. Kapay po siya. Ano lang po siya niya sa likita. Sino na yan? Kami namin po na hindi namin matanggap. Na nagkaganon siya. Kaya may hirip po kami ng tawad sa mga ano. Kasi siya na ano. 